Hi everybody, Captain L speaking with your training tips designed to help make you a better, more knowledgeable flight simmer, pilot, or aviation enthusiast. Let's strap in and lower the HUD and see what is on the horizon for today. Our briefing today will cover the Quick Reference Handbook or QRH for the 747-400. Uh, the Quick Reference Handbook or QRH allows crews to promptly and easily find and apply non-normal procedures. In order to find those non-normal procedures, there are four uh, indexes contained within it. Also, there's a normal checklist and all the systems will contain non-normal checklists. There also is a section for performance in flight, a maneuver section, and checklist instructions. The 747-400 has a uh, what's called a paper QRH. It's a, a plastic multi-ring binder, consists of uh, seven rings, along with a plastic cover, plastic back, and uh, it's comprised of uh, tabs in which you can easily find the indexes and the contents of the non-normal procedures. The indexes contained within the QRH are the Quick Action Index, an ICAS Message Index, an Unannunciated uh, Checklist Index, and an Alphabetical Index, and they're in that order. The Quick Action Index is on the front page of the QRH, and then behind that would be the other three indexes. The other three indexes would be tabbed, uh, the quick action index is not tabbed because it's in the front of the book. Also tabbed would be the normal checklist section. It's a green tab in the paper QRH and it would lead you through from the pre-flight checklist all the way through the securing checklist including the pre-flight, before start, before taxi, before takeoff, after takeoff, descent, approach, landing, shutdown, and securing. For more information on proper checklist usage, see my video tutorials on Checklist Usage Part 1 and Checklist Usage Part 2. The non-normal checklists will include all these systems uh, pretty much in alphabetical order, starting with doors, general, emergency equipment and windows, air systems, anti-ice and rain, automatic flight, communications, electrical, engines, APU, fire protection, flight controls, flight instruments, displays, flight management, navigation, fuel hydraulics, landing gear, and warning systems. Again, these are all tabbed sections, numbered tabbed sections within the uh, QRH. In the performance in-flight section, you have uh, graphs of uh, and, and tabulated uh, numerical um, tables for flight with unreliable airspeed, VRF speed charts, normal configuration landing distance, non-normal landing configuration distance, brake cooling charts, one engine and operative charts, gear down charts, gear down with one engine and operative charts. The maneuver section has uh, some of the most common maneuvers that uh, you normally do in flight training, including approach to stall recovery, Rejected takeoff, both low and high speed, uh, terrain avoidance, uh, TCAS or traffic avoidance procedures, upset recovery procedure in nose high and nose low conditions, and wind shear procedures on uh, takeoff, departure, and arrival and landing. And then there's also takeoff and approach profiles listed within the maneuver section. There's also a checklist usage uh, section that's all the way in the back of the QRH. This will list the normal uh, checklist operation, how to run the normal checklist, uh, who reads, who responds. Uh, the non-normal checklist operation will have the philosophy for carrying out non-normals in addition to the some of the symbology that's included within the QRH. Um, and that will be listed within that section for checklist symbology. QRH cover to cover would look like this. The front cover would be the quick action index and the back cover would be the passenger evacuation. 
The evacuation is always on the back cover so that it can be uh, easily found by just picking up the book and uh, turning the whole book over and then you'd be right at the evacuation checklist. The, um, in addition to a paper QRH, um, especially in uh, the times we're in now, most pilots will have the QRH also on their iPad. So it's another um, method of accessing a non-normal procedure. But normally in the 747-400, the primary method is to physically pick up the paper copy of the QRH and to go to the index, find the non-normal you're looking for, and then go to the respective system uh, numbered tab section and find that procedure. Again, this is what the paper QRH looks like. Again, it's a plastic uh, front and back cover. It's a seven ring binder. And then of course on the front cover is the, is the uh, quick action index. And then you can see that there's tabs for the ICAS message list, the unannunciated index, the alphabetical index, the green tab is the normal checklist, and then the systems are numbered in sequence from uh, one on. So it's very easy to get to a system uh, if it lists, for example, in this case, if we needed to go to the fire engine 1234 procedure, it'd be in uh, tab 8 decimal 2, and so you could just tab to section 8 of the QRH. And this is showing the back cover and uh, on both the 747-400 and the 747-8, um, there would be paper QRHs that would have the evacuation checklist on the back cover. The 747-8, of course, has an electronic checklist or an ECL. That's the primary method of accessing checklists in the Dash 8. But there also is a paper QRH in case the electronic uh, electronic checklist is not working and uh, certainly when you do a passenger evacuation things are going to go dark screens are going to go dark and uh, the paper QRH would always be used for the passenger evacuation in the Dash 8 rather than the electronic checklist. So let's go over to the, um, in this case we're going to look at the electronic checklist Okay, this is the electronic version of the um, 747-400 QRH. It is the QRH that PNBG gives out with the uh, 747 simulator model that they have. Uh, it is old. It's uh, You can see the date down here is October 1st, 2009, so it's not the most up-to-date QRH. Um, I could use a more current one, but I'd rather use the one that you have with your model. And uh, that way I'm not giving out any proprietary information as well. Again, the front cover of the QRH covered by the uh, plastic cover would be the quick action index. And you can see that it's all bold. Uh, anything that's a quick action index item will be in a bold font. You'll also notice that um, some of the items are in all caps and some items are not in caps. For, exa for example, cabin altitude is all in capital letters. Airspeed unreliable is not. Anything that's all capital letters is an ICAST message. It's something that would come up on the alert screen whether it be a warning, caution, or advisory, and you would be able to reference that uh, procedure in the QRH against the ICAST message that comes up. Anything that is in not all caps, like airspeed unreliable, evacuation, uh, fire engine tailpipe, multiple engine flame out or stall, these are what are called unannunciated uh, checklist items. There is no ICAST message that comes up for these. We would just know based on the condition to go to that particular uh, checklist item. You'll also notice on the quick action index that some items, uh, some of the procedural items are bigger than the other items. Uh, not, not by much, but a little bit. You can notice that cabin altitude uh, has bigger font 
than airspeed unreliable. Uh, rapid depressurization is bigger font. Smoke, fire, fumes. So just kind of eyeballing it. It looks like this rapid depressurization, smoke, fire, fumes, uh, evacuation, and cabin altitude are bigger font than everything else. And the reason for that is because these are procedures that where you could have a possible uh, ob obscuration to your vision. And so they make the item a little bit bigger to make it a little easier to see if you were in, uh, for example, a smoke situation. In the case of cabin altitude, if the cabin depressurized, you could get fogging um, with a big enough hole. And uh, that could cause an obscuration to vision. Same thing with uh, a, a rapid depressurization. Uh, certainly smoke, fire, fumes, you could have smoke. So the items, or evacuation, same thing. So the items that are a little more likely to maybe include uh, some kind of fogging or smoke situation would be in a bigger font. Also, the items on the QRH are not necessarily uh, memory items. Some are and some are not. So just because it's on the quick action index doesn't mean that it has a memory item associated with it. Quick action index items are items that need to be accomplished in a timely manner. Um, some of these items will be uh, memory items, like cabin altitude has memory items. Um, if you have to manually abort a start, that would have a memory item associated with it. Um, if you have to shut down an engine due to a fire, those have memory items. Uh, if we have a indicated airspeed disagree uh, or an airspeed unreliable, those would have memory items associated with them. Multiple engine flame out or stall also would. Uh, but something like smoke, fire, and fumes, uh, those that is not a memory item. Something like fire APU doesn't have memory items. Um, so some of these are memory items and some of these are not memory items. The next checklist in would be, or the next index in, would be the ICAS message index. And that's going to be kind of right behind the quick action index. And because it's an ICAS message index, you'll notice that it's in alphabetical order. And these are all ICAS messages, so they're all capital letters. You'll notice some have carroted prompts, and some do not have carroted prompts. The items that have carroted prompts would be um, procedures or non-normals that do not have uh, itemized procedures for the crew. There's no steps to really follow. They would give the condition and what it means, but there's no procedural steps to accomplish by the flight crew. And you can see this is in alphabetical order. And again, you would expect to see all capital letters because these are all ICAST messages. The next tabbed item would be the unenunciated index or unenunciated checklist index. And you would expect to see here that these would not be all capital letters um, because these are items that do not have ICAST messages. Everything else you can see here is um, would be items that um, we would know to do because the condition would be such that we need to do it. For example, if you had a suspected fuel leak, there would be nothing telling you you have a fuel leak, but we would go to the fuel leak engine procedure. If you needed to jettison fuel in return, we would go to the fuel jettison checklist. There would not be any ICAST message telling you that you need to dump fuel. Um, so all of these items, uh, for example, if you take off and you lift the gear and the gear handle will not move up, then we would go to the gear lever will not move up checklist. If you had two engines in operative, uh, we would go to the two engine in operative checklist. So again, all these would be uh, items that are addressed but do not have ICAST message associated with them on the alert screen. The next section or tab section, the next index, would be the alphabetical index. 
and the alphabetical index uh, is probably one of the more popular indexes because it's got everything in here. So this these would be enunciated and unenunciated checklists all in alphabetical order. So you're going to see items that are um, in all caps and you're going to see items that are not in all capital letters. So you'll get enunciated ICAST messages and unenunciated uh, all in one QRH um, index. And so that's very handy in order to go to the appropriate uh, message by alphabetical order. After the unenunciated checklist would come the normal checklist. Once you get past all the non-normals in the QRH, the last section being warning systems, then you'll find the performance in-flight section of the QRH. And uh, depending on the QRH, it will have maybe one or multiple sections containing all the same uh, tabulated charts. In this case, you can see we have two sections. One would be for the Pratt & Whitney 4056 engines in kilograms, and that would be for the FAA. And this is an old QRH, but it would be for the uh, JAR, which uh, nowadays would be the EASA. So the kilograms would be applicable to the regulatory authority for the FAA and for EASA. The other one would be the 747 freighter, which would have the CF-6 engines, the GE engines, and that's going to be in pounds, uh, and that would be applicable to the FAA regulatory authority. In the performance in-flight section, you're going to have um, tabulated charts and graphs, mainly uh, tabulated type uh, charts that would have things like flight with unreliable airspeed, uh, a VREF table, normal configuration landing distance, non-normal configuration landing distance, brake cooling schedule, one engine and operative charts, gear down charts, gear down with one engine and operative, uh, so forth and so on, holding charts, would all be included. Uh, usually two engine and operative charts as well would be included in the performance in-flight section. In this case we're looking at the flight with unreliable airspeed chart. After the performance in-flight section you get to the maneuver section of the QRH and this would have some of the um, common maneuvers that are accomplished in training, uh, things like approach to stall recovery, or rejected takeoff procedure. After the maneuver section would be the checklist instructions. This is usually a good section to read through because it lists the philosophy for using the normal checklist and the non-normal checklist. Uh, it would also list, based on your QRH, um, what uh, airplane numbers refer to what type of aircraft along with what the engine is. So in the case of this PMDG uh, model, the 570 would be for the freighter, and that would uh, have GE engines. The 109, if a procedure lists 109 after, it would be for a passenger airplane that has Pratt & Whitney engines. And if it's a 405, that would be a combi with Pratt & Whitney engines. So again, this is fully customizable to the airline that Boeing builds the uh, QRH for. Also, you notice that when we get past the preliminary uh, pages, it'll list the philosophy as to who calls for the checklist, who reads the checklist, uh, who verifies, and what the response is based on. Uh, so this is always uh, good information. It can vary from airline to airline how checklists are handled uh, because some airlines will modify their checklists uh, from the Boeing checklist and change the responses to challenging response. Or in the case of Boeing, it's a lot of area responsibility. Uh, if you want more detail on this, again, just look at my uh, videos on checklist usage part one and part two that will uh, explain a lot of this. And then, of course, there's the uh, section on non-normal checklists and how non-normal checklists are to be carried out, um, some of the, what some of the terminology is, the symbology, um, who's expected to do what during memory items, 
uh, things like that. This is another good section to read through. And then, of course, on the back cover of the QRH would be the passenger evacuation checklist that would be used in an evacuation. It's a read and do checklist. And uh, again, this is this is actually old because a, a newer checklist would have who does what. So it would say uh, parking brake set and it would have a C next to it saying captain does that. Outflow valve manual switches both on. It would have that the first officer does that. Outflow valve manual control push to open and hold until outflow valve indications show fully open. That would be first officer. Fuel control switches all cut off. That would be captain advise the cabin to evacuate and so forth and so on. This goes by area of responsibility, but they, on newer checklists, they do list. It's the only place where Boeing will list um, who does what as far as captain and FOs, but it's all based on area of responsibility. Again, if you don't know what that means, uh, again, view my video on uh, checklist one and uh, checklist two, uh, or part one and part two checklist usage. And lastly, if we had a uh, problem and it came up on our ICAS and we verified the problem and the problem was a hydraulic pressure system 4, we could go to the, in this case, the ICAS message uh, list index and we could go to the H's and we could find hydraulic pressure system 1, 2, 3, 4 and it's in section 13, item 13. So again, we could uh, either go to that, if we had a paper copy, we'd go to section 13, the tab. In this case, with an electronic checklist, it's linked. So all they have to do is click it, and we're there. Title is Hydraulic Pressure System 4. That should match the ICAS message. We'd have a pressure and a system fault light. It'll list the condition, the objective, and then there are procedural steps for the crew to accomplish. Again, if there were no procedural steps, this would have a carrot by it. But in this case, there are steps for the crew to carry out, so we would carry these items out. Just a few things on the uh, QRH. If you come across diamonds like this, that means this is a decision point. You, meet, you need to make a decision based on, is it this or is it this? Did the hydraulic pressure system message blank? or did the hydraulic pressure system message stay shown? It's going to be one or the other. If it's this one, continue normal operation. These boxes mean end of procedure. If it's this one, if the hydraulic pressure system message stays shown, then go to step five. As we're carrying this out, we don't have to say step four, step five, step six. Where it says affected system, we simply substitute whatever system it is, like in this case, number four. So we would say demand pump selector, number four, off. Uh, you'll notice that the checklist can be complete when you go through the whole thing except for deferred items. And the deferred items then would be completed when you're ready to do the descent checklist. Again, these would be decision points because it's it could be this one, it could be this one, it could be this one, it could be that one, or it could be this one. So depending on what it is, it's going to tell you where to go based on this situation. If you see any notes like this, it means that uh, uh, this is usually a big caution. It's telling you action is not reversible. So when you do this, you're, you're doing it for good, basically. It's not going to, you're not going to be able to reverse what you just did. Any notes you should read the note before you carry out whatever the action is. There may be notes. Uh, for example, like here, if system four is an operative, auto brake selector off, and then there is a note here, extend the ground spoilers manually and slowly, automatic extension of the outboard ground spoilers without automatic extension of the inboard ground spoilers causes the nose to pitch up. Of course, when you get to the end of the procedure, that'll be the boxes. Anything that has a uh, if we go back to the quick action index, if we go to fire engine, um, this has memory items associated with it. So anything above the dashed line would be memory items. So all of these would be accomplished by memory, and then everything below the dashed line would be uh, non-memory items. You'd be doing it according to the checklist. 
but before we get the checklist out, we would be carrying out the, to these particular items by memory. And again, there's not that many uh, memory items in the 747. Um, I think actually there's probably maybe eight or nine. Aboard an engine start is a memory item. Uh, cabin altitude would be a memory item. Airspeed unreliable has a memory item. Uh, the auto start has a memory item. Uh, severe damage memory item. Fire engine one, two, three, four memory items. IS disagree memory item. Multiple engine flame out or stall memory item. Rapid depressurization memory item. Smoke, fire, fumes, no, no memory item. So again, there's not that many that have memory items associated with them, but again, they'll be denoted by the dash line. So that completes a look at the uh, QRH. Thanks for listening. Okay, let's lower the HUD and go flying. Until our next briefing, keep the blue side up. Captain Al, out.